It's so fantastic to see so many of you here tonight, um, yeah, finally in person. My name is Catherine Lassen. I'm an architect and academic here in architecture at the University of Sydney, um, teaching in the School of Architecture. And um, as the Rothwell Program Coordinator, I'm really, really absolutely delighted to be able to finally welcome you all tonight and to, um, as you all know, here in person from the Distinguished Architects, last year's Pritzker Prize laureates, the inaugural Rothwell Co-Chairs of Architecture and Urban Design, Anne Lacaton and Jean-Philippe Vassal. Um, so I've got a tiny little bit of housekeeping to um, mention for you. Uh, the, everyone asks if you could please wear a mask. And in the event of an emergency, the exits are pretty clearly marked and um, there'll be staff here to assist if you require it. Um, so Jean-Philippe and Anne have been working with us actually for more than a year now uh, in the Rothwell Symposium, which some of you may have seen, and teaching the Rothwell Studio with us last year online and here in person. And so it feels just marvellous that finally after so many delays, they're here visiting, um, talking with the students, um, speaking with you all tonight and um, engaging with the uh, culture of architecture and urban thinking in this city. So before we, we begin, I'd um, like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. The University of Sydney is built upon their ancestral lands, on land that has never been ceded. So as we share our knowledge and learning, about architecture and making cities. Here this evening, may we also pay particular respect to the practices and knowledge embedded forever within the Aboriginal custodianship of country. So to begin, formally, we will hear from Professor Mark Scott, AO, uh, Vice-Chancellor of the University of Sydney. Thank you. Well, um, thank you, and ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to be with you in this packed theatre for this very special event tonight. Can I begin by acknowledging traditional owners, the Gadigal people, and pay my respects to elders past and present. This land has been a place for education and discovery of tens of thousands of years, and uh, we acknowledge traditional owners. 
As Vice-Chancellor, I'm delighted to be able to welcome you to campus tonight for this public lecture presented by Anne Lassiton and Jean-Philippe Bassal, the 2021 Pritzker Prize laureates and the inaugural Gary and Susan Rothwell co-chairs in architectural design leadership. And it's great to see in this theatre tonight so many key planning and architectural professionals, academic staff and of course our students who are present for tonight's lecture. And at the University of Sydney, we're delighted to host this conversation this evening. Since 1850, we have been Sydney's university, the University of Sydney, the University for Sydney, and more than any other place, our graduates have had a profound impact on the shape and development of this city. The Sydney School of Architecture, Design and Planning has been fostering dialogue about cities, buildings, and designed environments for over a century, we proudly graduated Australia's first PhD in architecture in 1963 and our first Indigenous architect in 1990. And our diverse community of students and academics come from nations around the world. And we remain sector leaders in architecture, design and planning in this city and around the nation with a noteworthy high proportion of female academics, uh, staff and students. And many former students now hold senior professional and academic posts in Australia and around the world, people like Dr Sarah Hill, who's the CEO of the Western Parkland City Authority here in Sydney, and Louise Cox, AO, one of Australia's best known architects and the former president of the International Union of Architects. Our research here at the university is addressing real world problems. At our university, we are developing a new strategic plan for 2032 a key element of which will be to further strengthen our great reputation for undertaking research seeking answers to the most complex problems and greatest opportunities facing our society. Housing and housing affordability are acute issues for all Australian cities, particularly here in Sydney. And our researchers are looking at how we can create livable cities that improve the lives of our residents. And this is particularly relevant because our speakers tonight are world renowned for reimagining social housing by, by bucking the trend through renovation, readoption, and reuse rather than demolition. Our students are privileged to be working with Anne and John Philippe this week with an intensive research studio looking at living in the city, specifically focusing on the Waterloo public housing estate not too far away from where we are here tonight. Before I conclude this evening, a particular thank you to Gary and Susan Rothwell, whose gift has enabled the school to accelerate its influence in the professions and the city of Sydney, and who have supported transformational student experiences like the one I've mentioned happening here this week. Gary and Susan are great friends of the University of Sydney. They are generous supporters, and as both graduates of the University of Sydney, for our current students, they are powerful role models. Like our speakers tonight, uh, Gary and Susan met as they were students here at the University of Sydney, and they have been life partners ever since. As I like to say to our students, it's not compulsory, but worth keeping in mind. To introduce the Rothwell program and our guest speakers tonight, will you please welcome the Head of School and Dean, Professor Robin Dowling. Robin. Thanks, thanks, Mark. I too would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation uh, on whose land we are uh, meeting tonight and pay my respects to Elders past and present. So my job is to quickly tell you about the Rothwell program and, uh, and what the, the generous gift of Gary and Susan Rothwell has enabled us in the school to do. Um, and I'll just quickly start by um, reminding us all that architecture and design schools actually take pride in breaking rules and flouting convention, in my experience at least. And in this spirit is where we see the Rothwell Chair program. It's not the usual endowed university professorship. So we have not one, but two co-chairs uh, in recognition that design, uh, good design outcomes emerge through collaboration. 
And the Rothwell Chair is a program of activities. It's not a single event, nor just the co-chairs. So we have a postdoctoral researcher, Hannes Frickholm, who's um, supporting the research elements of the program and connections to practice through two practitioners in residence, Michael Zanardo and Kalintha Brigham, who are both here this evening, as well as the students that Mark mentioned. And as uh, Mark also mentioned, this has allowed the School of the Rothwell Program to really accelerate its ability to influence and to lead thought with the built and designed uh, professions around, not just Sydney, but, but beyond. And so what I want, my, it's my pleasure then to think about, the, to tell you about the ways that Anne Lacaton and Jean-Philippe Fassar are the perfect uh, occupants of the first set of Rothwell uh, program activities. So um, Anne and, Jean-Philippe and Anne are world renowned for their work at the intersection of architecture and urban planning and also renowned for their thoughtfulness and their broad social ambitions. They are uniquely positioned to lead a program such as this that connects significant architectural and urban design currents with the academy and with practice. Their studio in Paris was established in 1987. And since then, the list of international accolades they've received is far too long to enumerate here this evening. It includes the EU Miles van der Rohe Award, the Global Award for Sustainable Architecture, the Grand Prix National Architecture in France, the International RIBA Fellowship, I think I'm touching, um, the, uh, and culminating, of course, in the Pritzker Prize in 2021, which I believe they were finally able to accept in person just a few months ago. Now, these successful practice careers are combined with a commitment to educating the next generation of architects. Jean-Philippe and Anne have and continue to teach across Europe and the US. Anne has taught at the Harvard Graduate School of Design, at the, at the EPFL in Lausanne and at the ETH in Zurich. Jean-Philippe has taught at Dusseldorf, Lausanne, TU Berlin and is currently Associate Professor at the UDK Berlin. Now, more significant than the list of awards and appointments is their body of work and their approach. Through diverse forms such as social housing, cultural buildings and educational facilities, we see expression of the idea that buildings are beautiful when people feel well in them. The body of work also evinces urban thinking, social commitment and investment in sustainability, most famously achieved in their housing projects in Bordeaux and Paris, where demolition was issued in favour of adding space to the existing buildings to support the existing residents. So Anne and Jean-Philippe's work offers lessons and inspirations for us in Sydney and beyond. So please join me in welcoming Anne and Jean-Philippe. Thank you. Thank you very much to be here for your presence. Thank you to Susan and uh, Gary Roswell for their very kind invitation. Thank you for the University of Sydney. And uh, thank you for all the students for what they are doing in the school and for what they will do in the future for the city. We will uh, show you some and tell you some little stories about our projects, about architecture. The question it is living in the city, inhabiting the city. Thanks to Africa, because we <coughs> Just after the, the diploma in Bordeaux, we went there for five years. We stayed and worked there for five years. And it was uh, like a second school, all to do when there is nearly nothing, when there is not so much resources with nothing or nearly nothing, or to do something, or to build, with no resources. 
to find some branches, to fix them in the sand, to bend them, to make the shape, to start to cover it with straw in order to leave the air crossing for ventilation. To place on the roof another kind of straw, much thinner, that will allow <coughs> during the rainy, rainy period to avoid the water to come in. So it was the first house that we designed, a straw hut in the middle with a door, a fence around to protect the straw hut from the wind, and outside nine branches fixed in the sand, supporting a straw, a straw roof to make shadow, and under it we could welcome some friends. We have always this experience in mind, and for us what was interesting it is to think coming back to Europa to much uh, richer situations, how we can still continue to work with this minimum, how to do the maximum with the minimum. And then it was a question of rethinking the situations, rethinking the economy, the affordability, but never leaving the, the quality of, of living, the quality of the space. And inhabiting beyond the functional. It's about freedom, comfort, generosity of space, pleasure, and luxury for all. Inhabiting is not only housing or flats or apartments. It is also here in this auditorium, or is it at the university, or it is here like uh, in the School of Architecture in Nantes for the students and professors to take the space and discuss and teach and learn. So inhabiting, it is the continuity of space when we move from our house to the stairs, to the street, to the library, to the shop, to the university, to the office. Inhabiting, it is just the space that follows each of us. And this situation of inhabiting in the city, it has to be the best as possible. And how can we make it the best as possible? Housing. Housing is a unit of the urban measurement. All starts from the in intimacy of each room. Not housing in general, but starting with one flat. That means a continuous attention to its inhabitants. And then the same attention multiplied 10 times, 100 times, 1 million times. The first house, Maison La Tapie, this relations between inside and outside. A space for living must be generous, comfortable, adaptable, flexible, luxurious and affordable. Maison La Tapie in Bordeaux, the first house that we designed after coming back to Africa. Social housing project in Mulhouse, with a photo 10, 10 years after the completion. Maison La Tapie again. Dwellings must offer freedoms of usage to generate possibilities for evolution, for interpretation and appropriation, for invention by their inhabitants. Housing must offer as much extra space as programmed space to promote relationships within spaces to bring about pleasurable situations. Extra space is a space non-programmed, free for use, free for freedom.
It means building larger, more than the program, twice more, building double, with the same cost as a standard dwelling, to be affordable for everyone and to create this freedom. To feel that incredible moment where you are at home, in your armchair, open the window and look at the clouds everywhere. It means a dwelling should be like a villa, more than the minimum function, with this extra space, additional facilities, additional spaces, winter gardens, terraces, balconies, unprogrammed spaces that could be perhaps 50% minimum of the habitable surface in addition. So instead, of this minimum dwelling that you see on the, on the left, more space. To introduce fluidity, mobility, freedom, appropriation, the possibility to turn around the bedrooms, to, to, to go out from the bedroom, to turn around and to come back by the kitchen or the living room, like in a villa. This facility of moving is extremely important. So for that, we think that we have to make the most simple structures, a kind of skeleton, beam column construction system that promotes flexibility and economy. Instead of walls, just columns and floors. In Europa, to play with the climate and not to fight against we see in Europa that more and more we have to make smaller and smaller windows, thicker and thicker walls with insulation. And instead of that, we can work much more efficiently by creating winter gardens, extra space, intermediate climatic space that is not heated, but in the same time that will allow the inhabitants to have the usage of that space. This is the, the last project we have finished in Mulhouse. I think it's the first time we, we show it. It was uh, 18 uh, seniors' dwellings for social housing. So the community space, the place where people can meet all together, discuss with the trees that were already there and that were kept very precisely the passage to go to the bedrooms, to the, to the flats, the transparency, and then entering the flat, this impression of space, of relations with the outside. For social housing. So it means the surfaces could be nearly two times bigger than the normal surfaces, but at the same cost as the standard. So in that case, there is no need to change the rent. You rent in function of the cost of the building. And another building, finally with the exactly the same objectives in Geneva, a building of uh, 20 levels with uh, two levels of shops and commerces, five levels of offices, and above residential units. But creating this, working with the same system of this extra space, winter gardens that offer this quality of life, the, the possibility to, to, to live with the climate and not against the climate a kind of like a clothes that you have on your shoulders and is never the same if it is the morning, if it is the evening, if it is the spring or if it is summer, when it is raining or when it is sunny. Something dynamic.
built double. Coming back to Africa, this was the, the first house, the house Latapi. For 60,000 euros, normally you have 60 square meters at this time. And in that case, it was possible to make 180 square meters for the same cost. A house that opens, that closes when you don't want to see outside in the street, and that opens to a transparent greenhouse and a garden. Building double also for a school of architecture. The School of, architecture, of archi architecture in Nantes, where here again, with the same cost, it was possible to double the surface because the students of architecture could need this freedom of space to design, to make models, to make events, to invite some other schools or some uh, directors for theater. a kind of free space in which everything is possible. And it is incredible to see the creativity of professors, of students in that space. And always the minimum material, the minimum skeleton in order to produce this volume. And we have a lot of activities. All these levels, they are connected from the street by uh, another street that climbs from the level zero to the level 10 and then to the level 17 and then to the roof, which is at 24 meters from the ground. And that offers on the ground another kind of agora space. Free for different usages, a cinema, or many other situations. Building Double, it was this competition for a warehouse in Dunkirk, which was a former very important harbor, but that loses its activity. And this was the last building. It was called the cathedral by the workers that were working there because it was a place where big boats were, big pieces of boats were repaired. It was 30 meters high, 25 meters large, and 80 meters long. And here for the competition, the question was, because it was abandoned, the question was, we should place inside, build inside a contemporary art center and storage of art. And for us, it was very strange to imagine that this incredible void that we had inside should be occupied by another project. So from that situation, that was the one of the competition, instead of building inside, we have built the double. So it means that in the double, you can build the program that was asked, but in the same time, you keep the first one free. And the two together, they create something else, which is very important, like two brothers. One totally occupied by the collections, by the different rooms of exhibition, and the other that keeps the memory of the place where the workers were repairing the boats. And it was much more easy to build outside this building than inside because uh, the soil was better, and finally, it was more economic to do that than to build inside. And it creates immediately this kind of incredible situation. So from the top of the new one, you can see the bottom of the first one. And immediately, new possibilities of occupation. To build double, it is also to build with. And this is this idea of transformation. It is also the topic of what we are doing with the students here in, uh, in Sydney for the uh, Waterloo situation. Transforming the city, 
It means coming back to the, what we learned to, in Africa, using what is already existing. Make do with the existing. So it means make do with the existing, with the people, with the nature, with the climate, with the economy, with intelligence, with minimum material, with the history and the memory of the site. It means to reuse, to transform, to invent or reinvent with what we already have in hands. And it means to do more with less. Making with the nature, it means trees, souls, flowers, animals, all of this should be considered with a lot of delicacy, with a lot of kindness, or it is possible to never cut a tree, to be careful to the animals that are here. Working with already everything already here. Here in that place, on that plot, it was close to Bordeaux, to the Bassin d'Arcachon, it was on the sand dune, and on this plot there was 50 pine trees to going to 30 meters high. And to build a house normally means to er erase the sand dune, to cut the trees and to build a house. And in that case we say no one tree will be cut. We will be take care about all the roots, all the bushes in order to build. And then it is this mix, this, mix, uh, this mix of materials, the trunks of the trees and the new columns of the construction. Thinking of it is possible to use the reflection of the light of the sun on the sea and to bring this light from down to up in order to touch the corrugated aluminum that will bring the light where the people will go under the house. The house is like suspended four meters from the sand dune. The sand dune was untouched. And then we go inside and we find precisely this big trunk, this big tree between the bedroom and the, and the toilet. And we have to, to move a little in order to pass through. And here we are just by adding 20% to a situation, we complete what was already existing in the, inside the forest, with the trees still moving inside the house. It's really interesting to see by adding how much we can go to create new situations. It means also to build or not to build. In that place, the municipality of Bordeaux was asking to to an embellish, embellishment of this pla place of Bordeaux, of this plaza. And we went there and we talked with the people and we listened to what they were saying and the children playing on the plaza. And we looked carefully and finally we went back to the municipality and we say, this is our project. Our project is to do nothing. And they accepted it. Because, in fact, in this question of embellishment, it is perhaps to think, but uh, perhaps the plaza was not beautiful. But, in fact, we went there and we asked the people and everyone were, was thinking that it was a charming space. So, not to build sometimes. Or to build almost not. When we discovered the Palais de Tokyo in Paris, that was built in the 30s. In fact, after a former project that was starting during two years by demolishing all the inside for a project that finally was totally canceled and never happened, the Palais de Tokyo stayed like a ruin during two years, totally empty with the rats and the pigeons inside. And finally, after some time, the question, the Ministry of Culture says perhaps it could become again a place of modern art with a first budget of 3 million euros for 10,000 square meters. And we say we have to do with this, also with this quality. The only problem here it is that there is nobody. How it is possible to bring people inside again, 
to be safe, secure, warm enough in winter, cool enough in summer, and to leave the artist free to do something inside. And then it happened. The first phase, it was 3 million euros for 10,000 square meters. And 10 years later, we, fin we finished the second phase with 12 million euros more. And now it is one of the biggest art center in the world with 30,000 square meters occupied by artists, libraries, cafes, restaurants, open from 12 to midnight. And with this feeling of freedom that it is so important for the visitors, but also for the artists. That can invent some incredible things, like these 25,000 tires that were making the kind of mountain inside the Pied Tokyo. Making with old buildings in the suburbs. I leave Anne, continue. Thank you. There's a very specific uh, issue that we are working on since more uh, than 20 years. Uh, when in France, um, the government decided an important national program of urban renovation, uh, which was based on the demolition of uh, more than 200,000 uh, modern uh, apartments, dwellings. And uh, we studied carefully the issue because for us it was something difficult to accept that um, such a number of buildings, uh, less than 50 years, which were not at the end of their life, could be demolished just because uh, there are some problems which cannot be solved, but which are not really the problem of architecture, but some social problems, educational problems. And uh, uh, for us, we, uh, we were uh, very interested and motivated to defend also the modern architecture, because for us, it means that if the modern architecture disappear, uh, what about the one that we can do today and in the future? So for us, it's important that every, every time uh, of architecture uh, should, uh, should, should be there uh, with no selection of the history. So however, these large modern housing developments um, are um, today most often rejected and uh, more often considered as a problem than an opportunity. It's not to say that there are no problems, uh, but we have to think and to look at carefully in how to solve these issues. In these places, after the utopia of a new, new way of life in the 60s, that they were carrying these places at the time of their construction, after that came the disenchantment until the critical situation that we know today here and there. As a consequence, many of these housing blocks are demolished, or the intention to demolish is there. So, and this is a speci uh, this especially the case in France uh, since uh, more than uh, 50 years, and today more than 200,000 uh, dwellings has been demolished. And when we studied carefully the issue, we started to look at the, at the, at the numbers. Uh, and uh, the pro this program of um, uh, renovation based on demolition and uh, reconstruction uh, as a cost of uh, 165,000 euros per dwelling. And we st what we studied is how to transform instead of demolition. And through a number of case study, uh, we, uh, we, 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 we went in detail in the study of transformation and we could arrive uh, to a project of transformation that uh, had the goal to extend life, uh, to give more living space, to create non-standard housing, and for a cost that, in general, was about 55,000 uh, euro per dwellings. So this, uh, on this basis that we, uh, we based our study that uh, was, um, in a way, uh, as started as much radical uh, in the opposition as radical was the demolition. And we, we said, um, at the beginning of this study, never demolish, never subtract, remove, never remove or replace, always add, transform, and utilize 
with and for the inhabitants. So this study was uh, uh, a research that we published in, uh, in 2004, and um, um, we studied uh, these uh, neighborhoods with uh, um, first an observation that was uh, positive. Instead of uh, going on the place and looking at these places and saying there are problems, uh, it should be replaced by something else, we tried to, to find first where, uh, where the values and the qualities. And uh, after that, uh, when the values uh, were, uh, were uh, set, uh, we defined, we tried to, to check or to observe where uh, were the problems. And in fact, most of the time, we could observe that, uh, in fact, it was uh, all of these projects uh, never go to the end because they were built very fast in a big number of, u of units. But besides, there were similar projects that were made in, with more quality. And we compare these two situations, starting with the same um, uh, conditions of uh, development and same constructing systems. And we observed that, in fact, what was missing, it was more freedom, more opening. And if we could open facades and even more create ex exterior space, that would change radically the situation and transform uh, these buildings into much better housing. So for us, it became clear that the transformation of existing housing was uh, uh, the solution uh, and uh, the demolition was the mistake. And transformation of existing housing is clearly the opportunity to upgrade massively the quality of all housing and provide very good housing for all in the city with less money and in a more sustainable way. So starting from these studies, but with a lot of difficulties, we arrived to do a number of, uh, to realize a number of projects. The first one was uh, this tower in, uh, in Paris of 96 apartments. Uh, the city of Paris uh, has envisaged the demolition, but finally they decided to keep and uh, to make uh, a transformation, a metamorphosis, that was uh, uh, the purpose of the competition. So, and we won the competition with uh, um, two, uh, main ideas. The first one was to make a transformation from the inside, from the quality of housing, and uh, that was uh, not the matter of changing the shape of, or uh, cutting the, the building or, or changing the, uh, just the facade, but starting from the inside, from inside out, uh, to provide with better quality of housing and better apartments. So after winning and the second, uh, the second uh, uh, statement of uh, our project was to, uh, to, to do this uh, transformation in occupied site without removing the inhabitants. So after winning the competition, we started an important work of uh, visiting all apartments because it's uh, absolutely important to, uh, to, to start to go inside and to look, to meet people and to look at uh, the situation. And we did this, uh, uh, this uh, survey of the, all the apartments and that was also the opportunity to meet all the inhabitants. And most of them, uh, they wanted to stay. They didn't want to leave these places, even uh, with uh, the problems they met uh, with um, the, the state of this uh, building. So we had also a number of meetings uh, with uh, uh, all the groups of inhabitants based on sometimes uh, general topics. Some of the times it was more individual uh, meetings to look at the uh, individual situations. And finally, uh, through these uh, meetings, uh, we, um, uh, we, we knew that uh, a number of people, they, they, they were not in the, in the, at the right place. They, uh, they had either a too big apartment because it, it were old and they were uh, there for a long time, or it was a, a younger family with the children with a too small apartment. And we proposed to the owner to, uh, to, to try to solve this uh, situation. And uh, uh, we made this proposal of uh, moving the families inside the building so that at the end, uh, um, every, every of the uh, 100 families had the, the right uh, place. That was a great challenge, but at the end, like a kind of uh, magical uh, uh, end, uh, we found the solution for everybody. 
So when the project was uh, uh, um, to transform this, uh, this block to, to provide with uh, better conditions of, uh, of living, again, in, uh, uh, without removing the inhabitants, uh, except this move inside the block. So it was important that uh, we don't do uh, uh, important big works inside, like changing structures, uh, and that uh, uh, the extension uh, was a solution to create this uh, new space, this uh, more, more fluidity, more, uh, more openness, uh, without uh, changing too much the typologies uh, of the housing. So the process, um, so here in, uh, in blue, it's the extension of uh, winter gardens. It means that it's non-heated non space. And the green uh, is an ex extension much larger that allowed to create uh, interior space and to, to uh, create also some typologies that were not existing in the block. So the construction system was uh, anticipated at the phase of the project uh, because it's necessary to be extremely uh, precise when you work uh, <clears throat> with a site occupied. So the, the modules of uh, extension were built uh, out of the site and, uh, uh, and uh, came with tracks and built uh, in front of the, uh, the existing uh, block. After having uh, removed uh, the existing facade, uh, we had two facades, the original facade and the second facade of the 80s, which was uh, made with uh, uh, insulation and uh, asbestos uh, panels with uh, asbestos. Uh, but this, uh, the process uh, uh, went on quite, quite uh, fast with this um, method and uh, the building was uh, recovered by these uh, extensions. And that allows to, uh, to move from the situation when you see uh, this double facade, the, the interior one, which was um, the former of the, uh, the 60s, and the new one uh, with uh, these uh, plastic panels and, uh, uh, that uh, obstructed the view. Uh, and uh, close the, the, the loggia. And from the situation, you create, we created this new uh, situation uh, with uh, all inhabitants inside that also had a uh, kind of association would discuss uh, with uh, the owner to talk about the, the rents afterwards. And uh, finally, afterwards, the rent uh, didn't increase um, uh, uh, very little, uh, very few uh, euros. Uh, but all families could afford uh, to stay there. So, and from the inside point of view, which was the most important, uh, from this situation, uh, very, very close, without any uh, exterior space, uh, that was the opening and the winter garden that we proposed to, to do. Also, work on the ground floors, which has been uh, closed in, uh, in the 80s uh, by these uh, big uh, grids, uh, with um, a big sun painted, uh, painted in the grid to make it more kind. Uh, and <laughs> finally, we, we removed the grid and uh, we, uh, we transformed this uh, all into more transparent and uh, um, uh, more easy uh, to access. So from the, this, this uh, exterior grid to this uh, situation. And uh, again, from uh, this um, work, from inside out, the, the uh, tower has been absolutely transformed uh, exactly as uh, it becomes a new building. Sometimes later in, uh, in Bordeaux, we had also this, uh, we answered to this competition uh, that was uh, concerning these three blocks of uh, 530 dwellings, uh, absolutely full up. Uh, so, with, um, it's, uh, in fact, the situation here is, uh, is a quite good situation because it was a big neighborhood built in the 70s and now is absolutely integrated in the city center with all transports, all equipments. So, it's a, it's a very good uh, place to, uh, to live. The city, again, has, uh, has uh, studied the case of demolition and rebuild, but in fact, it was a big, a big task to relocate uh, 530 families, and finally uh, with uh, the owner, uh, a social housing company of the metropolis, who was in favor of uh, not the demolition, but in favor of the transformation, and finally convinced the mayor of the city to, uh, to do that. 
And again, we uh, apply to the competition and uh, uh, with the same uh, uh, intentions of transforming uh, the, uh, this, um, these blocks from the inside, from the, uh, the quality of living and not uh, from the uh, image, the outdoor image. Uh, so this is um, the, the situation and this is the three bl big blocks uh, in, uh, in front. Uh, view from uh, outside and again it's uh, it's very important uh, starting this kind of works not to stay outside not to stay far away the first thing is to go inside and when you go inside we visited all the 530 uh, 30 dwellings and it was amazing uh, to see um, what we saw inside we we saw uh, a special quality that has been given by the inhabitants while the outside was uh, uh, looking a, a little uh, old and uh, not, uh, uh, not in very good state, but outside it was uh, all this uh, interesting situation with a, a huge number of collections of different things, pop pins, uh, pins, uh, photos of everything. And um, for us, it became very important that all this richness could be uh, very carefully kept while we were doing uh, the transformation. So it's uh, all uh, this, oh sorry, it's a little too fast. Oh. Well. So it's all this uh, kind of situation, which is in a way the backside of the facade, which is the most important to understand. And afterwards, uh, we, we, after the visit, you don't see any more three blocks you see 530 apartments with all these different situations. So here again, uh, after studying carefully the, uh, the interior situation, it was clear that uh, it was a little bit small inside with a good quality of, uh, of organization, but um, more space was necessary, more opening because all, all the rooms had very small windows. And we propose this uh, extension of uh, four meters because here compared to Paris, we have more uh, space around. So uh, we added uh, one meter compared to the um, Paris situation. Uh, so three, uh, three meters of winter garden and one meter extension. And uh, uh, at the same time that we uh, uh, added this extension, we uh, open, uh, we transform all windows into doors and uh, the loggia was integrated into the, the housing. So um, again, it's uh, important to anticipate uh, as, a, as a stage of the early studies, the, the method of working because uh, in occupied site, everything must be prepared in advance. So it's also the great advantage of uh, working in occupied say, site. Uh, we, can, uh, we can think that it's more difficult, but in a way, it's, uh, it, it requires more studies, but afterwards, it's, uh, it goes very fast. And in a way, the inhabitants, they, they protect their buildings and they force uh, to have rigorous method of, uh, of construction. So the construction, has, in a way, has two, uh, two different uh, works. The work of extension that, could, that should follow a logic from, uh, from bottom to, to top, uh, and uh, the interior uh, the transformation uh, with the renovation of electricity, bathroom, that could follow a different uh, rhythm. We also changed uh, the elevators and added one new elevator to uh, make the, the circulation uh, easier inside the block and uh, some of the different, uh, different works. So and apply to a piece of, uh, of this uh, building, uh, it, um, it means all this, that, uh, this extension in front of, uh, for a number of dwellings, uh, especially those with only one orientation, uh, the extension represents uh, almost uh, the same size of the, uh, the former apartments. So uh, that was uh, applied to the old buildings because uh, if it's a good solution, there is no reason uh, that it should be made for some apartments and not for the others. So uh, at every level for every apartment, uh, we uh, did this uh, extension. And the process of uh, construction uh, started after this uh, study with this uh, uh, construction of these uh, modules 
of extension uh, built uh, at uh, two, two kilometers away of the site and uh, then they came on the site and they were placed in front of uh, seven to eight modules uh, a day and at the end a totally new uh, building that again this new surface this new opening uh, again, without removing inhabitants. Uh, here in this situation, uh, the, the buildings were very well maintained inside, so there was no need of change of uh, inhabitant inside, so everyone uh, stayed uh, at, the, at the place. So the process of uh, construction, this one, after having made uh, this uh, new, uh, new foundation, uh, because, uh, in fact, it's uh, impossible to, to, for the existing building to support uh, this new uh, load. So it's important to have this uh, self-support uh, 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 with uh, foundations. Uh, and then, uh, level by level, this uh, construction of modules, the preparation of the next level, the columns that uh, arrive, uh, and then the new floors. And when the number of floors uh, three to four are, are, are stabilized. Uh, it's time to start the opening of the facade, and it's uh, the moment where uh, the interface with the interior space appears and uh, uh, the most uh, uh, difficult uh, moment. So the, and the, the commitment was uh, that the uh, uh, replacement of the facade should be two days maximum for every flat. So the first day, it's uh, the uh, opening, and the second day, the frames uh, with the new glass facade arrives, and a few days later, the, the winter garden is uh, finished, and um, a few weeks, two or two weeks later, they can, the inhabitants can, uh, use, can use it. So the process again from uh, the other side. First is to, to uh, place a protection inside, uh, to, uh, uh, to allow uh, families uh, to stay inside. Uh, the, the process of uh, opening the uh, handrails and uh, also to remove the windows that had the asbestos in the joints. And then the frames arrives. And then there is uh, this uh, refurbishment around the former uh, handrail to renovate, but it can be done uh, later, and the new winter garden and the appropriation by uh, inhabitants. So all this work made uh, uh, apartment by apartment uh, from the, uh, allowed from this uh, existing window uh, to have this uh, large opening, this winter garden, three, three meters plus one meter balcony, from the other side uh, to the inside. This, uh, again, the new fluidity which is given because now all rooms, they have open, uh, they have openness um, uh, on the winter garden, so it's possible to move from inside but also from the winter garden. And the winter garden, which has no uh, specific function, becomes really a place for appropriation uh, with uh, always uh, different ways of uh, using it. Uh, but it's going very fast uh, for the inhabitants to appropriate this, uh, this space and the additional balcony. And uh, from this uh, existing facade, the new facade, and the transformation of these uh, buildings, again, very uh, much transformed. And we added also, uh, because the flats were uh, the roof were, were flat, and uh, uh, the owner wanted to add a number of uh, larger typologies, so we added uh, some uh, uh, houses uh, on the roof, eight houses, uh, in a very uh, exceptional uh, location, uh, very light construction with a big winter garden plus uh, an additional uh, space for living, avoiding the chimneys of uh, the building, which are like uh, the trees in the Cap Ferré, they are, the cheminées are inside the house. And this uh, fantastic view on, uh, on, on the city. This is uh, uh, rented social housing, so with uh, uh, very uh, reasonable uh, rents. So just a few numbers to, 
to, to show the benefits of such transformation, 100% existing conserved, plus 53% of surface added, uh, including uh, winter gardens and balconies, um, minus 60% of primary energy consumption, just by uh, this, uh, uh, the, the winter garden is a kind of passive uh, system, also uh, a low carbon footprint compared to demolition. 100% of building was, has been occupied during the construction works. No increase of rent. In rent plus charges has remained uh, the same, five to seven euros per square meter. And the cost uh, of uh, this transformation was between 52 to 55,000 euros net, while the demolition and rebuild was estimated 160,000 euros. And uh, all this was uh, funded by, at 80% by the social housing uh, company, the owner, and the 20% public uh, subsidies. Um, not so much comments, but just to show that the carbon footprint uh, of the transformation is half uh, than uh, the demolition and the rebuild. And also the waste uh, that as, as the, the, the demolition has created was uh, huge, and in this case, we have no waste of uh, material. So it means that every building, every dwelling can be transformed. Every dwelling, every, every plot can be increased. It's a sustainable and qualitative densification for the benefit of living space, uses, and inhabitants. And such situation, we have many, many in all the cities that we should uh, look at them very carefully because uh, similar transformations are possible. But transformation, it's also the possibility of uh, having a better housing, but also for densification in some eras like this one, which was uh, uh, dense inside the buildings, but not very dense outside. The footprint of the building is less than 10%. So when this is a project that we, uh, we were invited to work on uh, this, uh, the little tower on the left uh, to make a transformation. And uh, uh, for this project, and uh, this is a tower of 40 dwellings. In this case, the tower was uh, almost empty. So we worked uh, with an empty building that was not easier than, uh, than the other one. And here, in fact, after analysis of the situation, uh, the building was uh, the square was the plan was a square with four dwellings and uh, in the middle uh, uh, core with one stair and one uh, lift. Uh, the apartments were not so bad, but uh, the, the big problem was uh, the bathroom, which was extremely small, less than three square meters. So what we proposed was to remove. Uh, the, the, the bathroom in the smallest uh, bedroom, that uh, the bathroom become uh, nine square meter, uh, and uh, then to replace the, um, the, the lost bathroom by, uh, the lost bedroom by a new bedroom that was totally new, newly built uh, beside the building and create a, a winter garden and a balcony to connect the new bedroom to uh, the, the former apartment and the living room. And doing that, we won uh, a, a new bathroom in a much larger situation, but also in total 33 square meters. But uh, also uh, the analysis of the situation showed that we had a lot of uh, parking lots around the buildings, which were uh, unused with uh, very few cars. And that uh, was here the opportunity to, set, to study the possibility of uh, densi uh, densification. It means creating uh, new blocks of housing on these places, which are not green eras. Uh, and uh, we proposed that to the, the owner, and he accepted. Uh, and we created two new wings, uh, which means uh, 40 additional uh, new housing. Uh, that was a great benefit because he owned the land. Uh, the networks was, were already there, as well as uh, public equipments. So that was a, 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 good, uh, a, a good solution for this, uh, for this project. And uh, in addition of uh, having this extension uh, for, the, for the housing, we, we had also this, uh, this new wing. So in, uh, in pink, this is the extension of every dwelling within uh, blue, the new bathrooms. 
the new wings uh, that also allow to, uh, to create a new, two new uh, cores of circulation and to move one of the one apartment into the new core so and make the so the facility make more easy uh, the the vertical situation situation in um, circulation in the former uh, building so and then the process of uh, construction started with uh, this uh, dry construction with uh, uh, steel uh, and the final uh, solution uh, the final building with uh, 40 uh, renovated apartments like, like new transformed apartments and 40 new uh, dwellings. So this, uh, this is the existing, which is transformed with, uh, again, this winter gardens, which are winter gardens are at the same time a very good solution for passive energy. It means that it, it's, uh, it's, it has the same efficiency as an insulation, but beside it creates a space uh, a space of living, more, more light, and the new uh, housing uh, uh, on the new parts with also the same uh, qualities and the same uh, facility. And it's, uh, that's the end. Thank you very much. Should sit there, no? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Okay. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> we just have uh, time for a short okay. discussion. Yeah. And maybe to try and draw out a couple of your um, kind of priorities, architectural interests, in the context of um, the fact that. Um, this is very much a continuation of the work we started a year or so ago and the Rothwell Symposium last year and some of these themes maybe will be familiar to um, members of the audience and I thought it could be nice to try and draw some of them out just a, a little bit, if that's okay. Um, so, yeah, thank you both so much for being here uh, and um, for showing us your inspiring work. Um, it's really exciting for us and I'm sure for the students to have you here in the school and working together has been a delight. Um, so one of the comments that you made in the symposium last year and was subsequently tweeted um, from your lecture was your thought that the quality of the individual unit is the cornerstone of collective life and that what is good is beautiful. And I wondered if you could say a little bit more about the overlap that it's, I think, kind of easy to see in your work um, and suggested by your comments about this um, connection between ethics and aesthetics. I think it's uh, through this idea of the transformation of the city, it is to consider all the history of the city from its origin and to the uh, new situations. And uh, I think it's important for everyone to understand that there was a harbor, that there were workers in the harbor, that there were children of these workers, and that they were here, and that they were living there, and that they uh, spent their life there, and they were craftsmen <coughs> that were also here and uh, working. And all of this, it leaves some traces, and we have to be careful to keep these traces as much as possible and uh, sometimes it is uh, housing, it is flats, it is apartments. And I think at the end, this accumulation makes the richness of the city. Um, and uh, it is also the way to, to create this mixity, to, sh to see also that we, we, all of us, we, we work and we live together uh, with these relations to what ex was existing before. And precisely this uh, mixity to avoid the ghetto, uh, ghetto of uh, rich people, of poor people, or uh, uh, I think at the end it is uh, the way to, to, to create a, a city where everyone could be uh, happy. And um, it's, I think it's what we have to do now with the existing city. And we have really, as architects, as urbanists, 
think about this kindness to the situations. And this idea of kindness is very, very important. Yes, when, when we talk about living in the city, because today is, uh, is a topic that comes very often on the, on the table, and, and it's clear that uh, for us living well in the city starts from the quality of housing. And um, the quality of housing means a feel, feel well at home, not feel constrained, not feel compressed. And also it's, uh, it means also that um, you, can, you, you can have everywhere affordable situation to live. That's, in a way, uh, we, sh we should consider that there is no category of housing. That could be everywhere good housing, and this good housing should be affordable everywhere, and not as uh, it is today where the city centers become so expensive that even the middle class cannot stay, and even more than the middle class cannot stay inside uh, the, the city centers, and they go more and more farther, uh, which is not very good for many reasons. Socially, it's not very good, but also uh, it's not very sustainable because it means that city expands. So, and, and in fact, we, um, uh, we, we, we can do that. We can do this good housing everywhere. It means that the, the quality of uh, collective life start by the quality of housing. It, it means that uh, the, um, um, the well-being at home. It's why um, sometimes today uh, there is a uh, there is, um, tendency to think that um, the apartments could be in cities uh, smaller and smaller because you have more facilities uh, in, in the city, you have a community space, uh, but we are uh, totally convinced that uh, if your individual space is not uh, well, you cannot uh, really be open uh, to the social life. So uh, it's, it's why it really starts uh, with the quality of housing and the, uh, also the generosity of housing because the, a generous uh, apartment, a generous house is also uh, partly a kind of community space because you have this possibility to invite others and it's a starting point of the social life. So for us it's something and we, uh, from the very beginning we worked in that way of uh, increasing the space uh, without increasing the, the cost of things, of construction, because it's important to have this, uh, um, this space that makes also the life uh, more relaxed be between the members of family. Yeah. Um, do you think that modern architecture was common amongst the modernists, um, that architecture, and spe so specifically modern architecture, could involve, even today, the support of an ideal or a good life? Like, do you think that dream, if you like, of the utopian modernists is still possible? It is clear when that at the beginning of the modern architecture, um, uh, in, in, it replaces in many situations, situations of living that were totally uh, impossible. Uh, sometimes no bathrooms, so no toilets, etc. So in the 50s, uh, the modernism was something uh, really, really uh, essential. Um, but we have to continue and to, to continue to improve these situations. Um, and uh, in some situations, very in, in Europe, it's very often uh, around uh, the cities, in the suburbs, this uh, modernism didn't go to the maximum it could go. Mm -hmm. Even if it is not so much things, there is not so much difference between a super beautiful apartment looking to the Mediterranean in Nice and another one that it is in the suburb of Paris. It is only a question of balcony. One has a balcony and he can look to the uh, sea. The other one has a very small window and he cannot see the landscape. So just by changing this little thing, uh, we, you, you can go to the maximum of this architecture. And I think it's important to continue this architecture to bring it to its, uh, to its maximum. And by the way, it uh, allows when you add 50% uh, of space to an existing situation, at the end to have 150% of space. Instead of <laughs> when you demolish, you lose one, you rebuild, you make one, at, at the end you have one and you have spent for demolition and reconstruction of one. When on the other case, you only 
of 0 0.5 to add. And it's precisely it is this idea of transformation in practice is what we learned from Africa at the end. Oh, it is possible to add and to connect situations. It's clear that um, to, to come back to what you say, um, the quality of living, a good way of life, it, it, sh it cannot be anymore a dream or an utopia. It must be a reality. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that and to work with that because as we see today, there are so many troubles everywhere. And it's, uh, it's clear that architecture cannot do everything, mm. but it can do this minimum of already uh, giving a good space for living. Yeah. Um, what do you think about, so in the, also in the symposium last year, Irene Scalbert um, spoke about some yeah, really inspiring housing projects in, in France. And one of the comments he made was this idea that difference matters today more than ever. And I see in your work there's this interesting um, connection between a, a kind of a frame, a neutral frame, and then this highlighting of the differences within each apartment. Um, I mean, what do you, could you say a little bit more about that notion of difference, let's say, in your work? I think the <clears throat> it's interesting to, to give some freedom to the to the inhabitants mm -hmm. because at the end we when people have a little space to make a little garden they make a little garden with the fences and the flowers or bushes and finally for the pedestrian that uh, is in the street he looks at this garden and uh, it's beautiful when uh, this uh, same inhabitant, he has a wall and a window just, and he cannot go on the piece of land which is behind, there is no garden. Uh, and, and this is the, the, the question of be, being confident in what the inhabitants can do when they are in a sufficient uh, situation. So to, to create uh, spaces that have this possibility of freedom, of uh, this, uh, this comfort and this idea of pleasure, it is to pre precisely to be confident in the inhabitants. And I think it's a way the city at the end uh, becomes more welcoming and uh, makes uh, better relationships between all its inhabitants. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've been speaking with the students a lot, um, looking around Waterloo, and uh, it's a big problem. <laughs> or there are a lot of many challenging issues there. Um, but one of the things that you've talked about with them is this um, important distinction, let's say, between a modernist urban approach of tabula rasa and the, something mm -hmm. like that you would see in the Plan Voisin, um, and, and something that where you you take almost the opposite of a master planning approach. And even with the students, like it's very conventional to start with a master plan and the small site model. And you were saying we should make the site model so that they can't change anything. <laughs> it's just this, it's a given. It has to be um, yeah, expanded upon. Um, and yes, yeah, so I thought that could be a nice, um, to say something more about that yeah. inside out or a uh, very, I would say, very different approach the, to urbanism. The city as well. Yeah, indeed, mm. yeah. Yeah, but it is a question of, uh, if we consider this idea of the transformation, mm. it means that the approach has to be different. Uh, we continue to, I think, to practice uh, urbanism as if we had to make new cities in the, in the lands of, uh, empty lands of Russia or Arabia or... Uh, in fact, uh, most of the lands now are already built or constructed and uh, with a high density, with full of complexities, full of, uh, sometimes it is some problems, sometimes it is beautiful things also that happen in the city. This complexity is, is extremely interesting. It is a richness. Mm -hmm. But the complexity, you need to be extremely close to these things to understand it and to find the solutions and the answers if you look at the city from uh, two kilometers above, you never see these little details. Mm -hmm. And precisely by uh, finding an answer to that detail, to that detail, to another one, to another one here, finally you, you, you see that the, the problems can become solutions and uh, uh, possibilities of pleasures, of uh, new, new ambitions. 
And this precision is absolutely uh, interesting. So it means for, for us that uh, in the idea of the transformation of the city, what is new, it is that we should nearly start by the architecture, by uh, finding the, the way to repair, to, uh, to improve, uh, to add to, to a situation. And all these little acts, they will build the city at the end. They will complete the city. And we have so many young architects that are here that are ready to go on the place, to meet the people, to see the situations, to talk with them, to see what is the problem. Sometimes it is a technical problem. Sometimes we can add something. And to be extremely precise, and this precision at the end, I think it's the way to, uh, to work with the city today. And uh, instead of that, most of the time, as architect, I don't know in, uh, in Sydney, but we are there in the office. We are waiting for the newspaper in which we are looking for the, what competition we will do. Uh, and uh, we uh, receive the, the brief of the competition. And we know that we have this plot, uh, that uh, we have to be five meters from this, and that we have to make a building. And it could be perhaps red or blue. And we have to de decide about the color. But I think it's not the work of architects to, work, to, do, to do that. I think precisely we have to, to uh, to go in the a real dimension, to, to, to go out of the office and to, to try to find this, this, uh, these solutions. I was talking about doctors, because finally, uh, when we don't feel well, perhaps we are ill, we go to the doctor and he says, if we had to take this medicine, or to, if it is okay, no, you have nothing to do, you are fine, you can go. And we are, and it's fine. And I think this proximity, uh, we should have it in the same way for the city. So perhaps architects we could be some kind of doctors <laughs> for the cities. Now it's, it's clear that um, urban planning today is, is very different. There is still, of course, is, uh, the issues of networks. Of, but in fact, uh, the rules are not the same. In, in fact, the rules is, um, uh, is the rule of uh, what is new as to take care of what is existing, as to create, uh, as to follow rules of the existing, to, uh, to, uh, to add, to transform from uh, what is already there. And it's not anymore the same rules as um, a new master plan with a kind of composition of volumes where the rule is made to create a kind of uh, diversity or uniformity or uh, something like that. And, and in fact, it's uh, this kind of new rules that we have to, uh, to understand. And uh, that also uh, uh, um, requires uh, only specificity. It means that uh, there is not uh, a global rule that can work. It's, it's, it's a rule that comes from the observation of the ground and of the, situ of the sit uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there is a potential to do something. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's a lot. But it's, uh, it's in, in function. It's like, a, in, in a way, the existing is, is a fixed, the permanent situation. Mm -hmm. And the, the new is a kind of virtual that lands delicately on, on the existing and has to find the place, but without disturbing uh, the one which is already there. And, they, and automatically, it is more, the economy is there mm -hmm. with this precision. The ecology is there, the sustainability is there. Yeah. So these questions that are so important today about uh, avoiding to waste CO2, etc., to to consume less, to consume less materials, but still to have the ambitions to do more. I think it's by this uh, uh, approach, uh, precise approach, that we can uh, get it. Um, I'd like to ask you just a tiny little bit about um, the relationship between art and architecture, um, because your work involves projects such as the Palais de Tokyo, uh, you know, described as one of you know, Europe's largest uh, centre for contemporary art. And I think it's a very interesting conception of a space for displaying art because it's neither the so-called, say, white cube that many curators would favour because it gives you a lot of control, nor is it a museum in which one feels, let's say, the intense presence of architecture 
that one, or in the traditional sense that you say may find in a um, very beautiful museum by Sana in Kanazawa, the Museum for 21st Century Art. And um, so it seems like something less familiar than both. And so I'm curious about the thinking explored in that project and how that feeds into connections between your art architectural as well as, say, ethical position. Does that make sense? <laughs> Maybe it's too complicated. But just, mm. uh, it's, no. it's an unusual project. Yeah, but I think this relations with art and architecture is interesting. First, it is, uh, the art is produced in atelier. Mm. And it's also interesting to consider that the art exists already in the atelier and not necessarily in a white uh, uh, museum, totally white. So, and sometimes it's extremely interesting to to go in the atelier of some painters and to see these accumulations of paintings, of uh, traces, etc. Because also it, it says a lot, and it is not necessarily one painting in between a, a white facade. But I think this. Um, we, 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 have, we worked a lot on this idea of inhabiting, and sometimes it was for housing and uh, for flats, for apartments, and sometimes it was for uh, contemporary art, etc. And we think uh, it's very interesting to, 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 to see what the artists are doing. And I think precisely, and it comes, for me, it comes back to this idea of the city, which the city is a cultural question. Mm -hmm. And this cultural question it needs to be uh, uh, in the mind of uh, architects, artists, musicians, dancers, uh, because I think it is uh, if these cultural situations happen that the city will be really uh, uh, friendly and nice and beautiful. Let's hope. <laughs> Can I ask no, what, is, yeah. what is interesting for the... Um, the places for art, and it's what we have in mind. In uh, because it's very difficult, in fact, to 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 have a, um, a general uh, understanding of what the artists want. Mm -hmm. To uh, because all the artists have different uh, wishes, and for us, what is important is to provide with uh, a place with a high potential of, of uh, possibilities of. Uh, uh, configuration and it's what we call a kind of uh, point zero mm -hmm. and this point zero offers a lot of possibility and with this uh, situation it's uh, we give some tools like uh, rem removable uh, walls to display uh, and um, in fact it's interesting that at every exposition ex every exhibition the space can be arranged as uh, the curator and the artists want want to do it but at the end, if it's important to come back to the situation which is the most potential for the next one. So, and it's also a difference with, uh, between housing and uh, public space, is uh, that uh, housing, the inhabitant is, uh, is kind of permanent. It's not the same temporality, but in a way, at the beginning, he found this kind of situation. And uh, in a school or in a museum, it's, uh, it's, it's the same. It's interesting to give this uh, high potential and, and then to let the users to do also their, their own uh, development. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, at, so maybe as a final kind of question, because I know we're running a little bit behind time, is maybe you could say something um, building on that, thinking about the work that we're doing with the students and uh, you know, like how one might contribute today as an architect, thinking about the idea of precise diagnosis, because some of the yeah. um, discussions that we've been having with the students, it seems to me there's this uh, kind of ambition towards precise diagnosis, and that that is um, something that you identify with the potential for invention. Yeah. It's, it's very clear that uh, what is very specific in uh, working on the existing situation is that you have to get the knowledge of the situation. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's important to, to observe, to analyze, to be extremely precise on what is there, to count everything, to count, because every detail counts. Uh, the number of trees, the square meters in, uh, in, uh, of, of uh, gardens, of the green space, but also the square meters inside the, the, the blocks. 
because in fact it's uh, the, the the transformation um, is 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 a is a project that comes from this observation. Uh, it's it's what we insist al always with the students that first before you explain your project, you must explain uh, what you have observed and why your project is coming from this. How, how far your project is coming from this uh, observation. And uh, in this observation, as we said in the, in the lecture, it's very important to start with the positive, always. Mm. Because otherwise, uh, if you start with the negative, you stay on the negative, and you never uh, uh, look for the values. So it's very important because at the end of the day, you see that the values are always more important than the problems. And the problems, you can solve them. And the values, you have to protect them. Yeah, it's about love. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think that's a perfect moment to end. <laughs> um, so with hope for the future, <laughs> I'd like to um, thank you so much again um, for sharing your time you and uh, your thinking and your generous engagement with us and look forward to ongoing discussions. Thanks to you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you so much.